As Baptist Bible Church celebrates its 70th year, let us look back in time and appreciate God's love, grace, and faithfulness to His people. It was in 1949 when Baptist Bible Church had its first service in a small rented room on La Garda Street, Manila. Missionary Frank Hoagie writes, Our first service was very small. We only had four benches and only one Filipino boy was present. Mrs. Hoagie presented the flannel graph story. Dorothy played her accordion and Marvin his saxophone. I got up and took my text, read it, and then closed my eyes in prayer. We were going by faith and not by sight. When I finally looked, two men had come in and were sitting in the back bench. I preached as if the building was full. Others would stop outside and watch through the window. That small service was the first of many, including meetings conducted every night for seven weeks. More people came as religious films were shown, and in these meetings, the gospel would be preached. Some would be drawn to the church services by singing and playing of praise-filled, gospel-centered songs. It was one Sunday morning that Mother and I were about to go to church in Tapitan. That's where we usually go on a Sunday. At that time, when we reached by Ricardo, we heard a music. We saw missionaries, a woman, Ay, sabi ng mama, sige, next Sunday we'll go there. So that happened. Next Sunday we went there. It was strange kasi iilan lang kami. We were so very few of us. And from then on, we attended the church already. One Sunday night, Pastor Hobie gave the invitation for those who want to receive Christ as their personal Savior. I raised my hand. Mrs. Elsie Hobie I explained to me the plan of salvation when I came forward. Some joined the church after receiving tracts and Bibles. Some after attending the numerous Good News classes and outdoor meetings held in different areas. A family devoted and passionate in reaching the lost, the Hoagies led the church in trying different means to reach the Filipinos. Even prisoners and their guards and hospital staff and their patients were not spared from being reached with the gospel. They were resilient. They were pioneering. They were able to take what little they had. They were sensitive to the things that God had given them and used them wisely. Makipid sila. And uh, they were able also to, to trust God for many, many things. And they always saw that God provided for them. And that kind of a spirit, I think, was imparted to the church as well. They always knew that God would provide. God faithfully blessed the church as more people believed in Christ as their Lord and Savior. Frank Hoagie writes, It was very hot in the little place, but the Lord blessed with children and some older folks that came. Mrs. Hoagie had her class in the back, close to the door, and I was in the front part with the adults. Soon, we had a group of young people, and we had to take them and the preschool children outside. When it rained, we crowded inside. It was hard, but as long as the Lord blessed, it was better to be crowded than to have lots of room without His blessing. Pastor Hoagie, when he preaches, he's, he is so emotional because when he talks about the death of Christ on the cross and the penalty of sin, makikita mo, his chin already moves like that, and then makikita mo his eyes are watery he would tell them that you cannot save yourselves it's only by the blood of jesus christ salvation is very paramount and then of course baptism after that stress rin niya. baptism uh, is not included in salvation you have to obey god to be baptized so that people will recognize you as the child of God and as a member of the church. Pastor Hoagie spoke simply but very powerful words of God. It's important to Pastor Hoagie that you, you present the way of salvation through the Bible. Use your Bible to show the, the way of salvation. It is always by grace through faith in the Garda, it was pretty basic. My sister played the accordion. My dad played the guitar. My uh, brother 
play the saxophone. I was always the one carrying the music stand uh, as a small boy. So a lot of times we would go out, we would hold the good news classes, we would hold extensions. The numbers grew, and there arose a need for the new gathering place. God provided a new place for the growing church at the corner of Allegra and Paltok streets in Manila. By then, the church, which was known as Philippine Baptist Bible Mission, would have taken the name Baptist Bible Church. Once we got to Alegria and Paltop Street, God began to give us more people who were talented, and we always had a good choir. My dad was musical, and he would uh, help in, in teaching the choir and leading the choir. My sister played the piano, and God used her as well. And then God brought people to us. I know the abbots were also very, very contributive in those areas. Late pa ng choir namin, ito na kami school, 10, 15, gano'n. Halo-halo kami. May high schooler, may, ano, may young people, may doctor na. Halo-halo kami. There were cantatas. There were things that we always looked forward to, whether it was in the in, in the missions or at Easter or at Christmas time, there was always something that was going on as far as music was concerned. My dad was traditional. It was a traditional service in those days. It was just ordinary, old-fashioned singing from the hymn books. There were trios and solos and quartets. We would sing a lot and uh, everybody enjoyed lifting their voices. The members of Baptist Bible Church grew spiritually under the pastoral care of Frank Hoagie. They learned about God as his word was passionately preached from the pulpit. They too shared the pastor's burden of reaching the lost for Christ. My father would challenge the church. Whatever God led him to do, he would challenge the church. We're going to do this because God will provide for us to do that. children's ministry, two weeks, and Volunteers, sila de Asis, Leti, naging teacher ko yan. Very active kasi we have good news club also in Uresa, dyan sa may altura, dyan sa mataas, at dyan silensyo, naabot namin lahat yun. Throughout the early years of Baptist Bible Church, other missionaries would come and help with the work. Some took care of the church while the Hobies were on furlough. The other missionaries came, like the Gullians, which were the second missionaries, they started attending also the same work, but ultimately they left and started a mission in Mandaluyong. Joe Vela, he came, they were working in our church there just barely after we started our the church in uh, Allegri and Falto. They later started Bethany Baptist Tabernacle. The Hughes arrived, they served in several places. They served at uh, our church while we were on furlough. They then finally decided that they would go to Cebu. Lahat ng mga uh, missionaries na dumadating, kadalasan kami ang sumasalubong eh. Yeah. Ang church, may mga streamers kami dyan. Yan, yung mga sila Quinlan, yan sila Nal, uh, si Anderson, ang daming, ang daming kids. Really what they emphasized was to spread the gospel, to reach out to people so we can invite our friends, our family to join so that they can also hear about the Word of God and finally to be saved and become a member of the church. Eventually, the church would have mission trips to different parts of Luzon, from heavily populated poblacions to hard-to-reach barrios. Many were exposed to the Word and saw their need for their Savior. Many local churches were established and supported as people professed faith in Jesus Christ. Baptist Bible Church members who led and participated in these trips cultivated their love for missions. 10% of the church offerings would be used to support missionaries and their work in different places. He led in missions basically because he realized that without uh, a church being involved in missions, we would, as missionaries, not be here. And 
I think he, he realized that the only way for a church to really be a New Testament church is to be involved in missions. He started the Peso a month missions emphasis. In those days, a peso was worth a lot more than it is today. Because, you know, you could ride a Jeep for five cent dollars in those days. But money was scarce. Because I remember when we first started, you didn't see a lot of people wearing different dresses. When they came to church, it would be almost the same dress every Sunday. But he challenged them to give to missions. Give what you can, but try to make it a peso a month. Then, if you can, a peso a week. Everyone was challenged to give to missions. Soon, as God blessed the growth of the church, a new building was needed, and the Lord allowed the church to acquire and construct a building on Sosiego Street, which continues to be the home of the church to this day. After serving the Lord well for many years, with his family and the church members supporting him, Frank Hoagie felt it was time to turn over the pastorship of Baptist Bible Church. In 1966, the church called Joseph Boyd Lyons to be the pastor. Pastor Boyd Lyons had been pastoring a church in Bartow, Florida, when in a missions conference he met Fred Knoll and Don Lavender, men who God used to bring the gospel to many Filipinos. In that conference, Pastor Boyd would express to Don Lavender how he had a burden for the Filipinos as well. I started talking to him, and he was a pastor in Vallejo, California, where all the missionaries got on a ship in San Francisco to go to the Philippines, and he helped them. And so uh, he said, you know, I was, just, uh, I was discontented, and I wanted to get on that ship and stay with those missionaries going to the Philippines. And so we talked all day, and I said, and I had about the same feelings that he was telling me he had. During the preaching of a missionary, Pastor Boyd surrendered to become a missionary to the Philippines. So the next day we had a mission, uh, missionary from Korea, Frank Shiver. I said, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. And so we started preaching. And uh, I remember God spoke in my heart that day. And I surrendered to go to the mission of the Philippines. Brother Baker, my friend, was there before, you know, months before that. He said, good place to raise kids in the Philippines. But he had no kids. Uh, but that just made me think, you know. And so that night, God really spoke to my heart. And my wife came and said she'd go with me. Then uh, I went, that, that time, definitely knew, come the Philippines. So I went back and finished college, uh, approved by Baptist Bible Fellowship, and we came and we arrived here in uh, 1965, August. And so it's been a great life since then. But I know Philippines is where God wanted me. We came on a ship out of San Francisco and when the ship backed out from the pier and turned and went under the Golden Gate Bridge, I thought, we're going. And I had about a five second wonder. And then I thought, well, the Lord's going with us. So I was perfectly calm, the rest of the way, excited to come. And when we were coming into Manila, my wife got up early, got on the, on the ship. She wanted to see the Philippines right then. She was very excited about coming. No fears, just do it God's will. Pastor Lyons, okay, we met them at the pier. We streamer din kami. Uh, pag, pag baba nila, wow, sabi namin, Pastor Lyons, baba niya, thick hair. Si Miss Lyons, <laughs> slim din si Miss Lyons. Itangkad lang siya, blonde hair, no black. No. Black sip my Mrs. Lyons po na. Black. Kailan lang siya nag-blunt. Oo, oh, ganun ba? Nagputi-puti. <laughs> oh, sige. Oh, oh. Tsaka sunod-sunod na yung tatlong bata. Si Eddie, si... Tsaka si... Cute, cute na... Ano, Sherry. Anyways, uh, yun. Pagdating nila dito, talagang... We gave them a very warm welcome. Pastor Lyons and Donna, really wanted to be close to learn about the Philippines. So they even enrolled in Ateneo to learn about Filipino culture. Because they really want to be, really know the people, know the heart of the people, so they can also impart to them uh, the gospel 
using that Filipino heart to heart talk. So that's what I learned about the Ghana. She loves the Philippines. She loves learned it right away how to cook, how to deal with Filipino. Under the leadership of Pastor Boyd, Baptist Bible Church continued to cultivate a zeal for the Great Commission. Young and old worked hand in hand in sharing the gospel. God has been faithful, and many souls were saved and added to the church. I became more active in the Lord's work as I saw Pastor Lyon's zeal towards winning the lost. I remember when Eddie De La Torre, as a young man, surrendered to full-time ministry after Pastor Lyon gave the message. My husband and I continued to serve the Lord as Sunday school teacher in the young people's department until such time that the Lord called Eddie, my husband, to the mission field in Ormoc City, Leyte. Uh, we had soul winning, track distribution. We had choir. My wife sang in the choir. Oh, I'll tell you this, that's funny. Uh, uh, they, were, they were very kind to my wife in the choir. I didn't join the choir. but. Uh, they said, okay, Donna, you, you sing a special. You know, they're going to sing a song, and then she's going to sing the verse, and, and then they're going to sing the chorus. And my wife said, okay. And so we got up here Sunday morning, and they started singing, and it was my wife's turn to sing. And she goes, and she could not say a word. And it was so funny. And I said, what happened to you? I said, she said, when I looked out there and saw all those Filipinos, black hair, I just couldn't say anything. It, her, she was kind of had, I guess, a culture shock. It was so funny, and uh, I think that's the biggest, one of the biggest culture shocks, and, and funny also. But she, she got over it, and then she could sing. To strengthen their faith in God and His provision for missions, the church practiced faith promise giving. People were encouraged to pledge an amount to give specifically for missions, and then have faith in God to supply it. The Faith Promise Offering has been used to support missionaries all over the world. Pastor Boyd would serve as a pastor of Baptist Bible Church up to the present, with his son, Greg Lyons, pastoring from 1990 to 1992. Through the years, God faithfully sustained His people who have been faithfully serving Him. By God's mercy and grace, Baptist Bible Church strives to glorify Him in fulfilling the Great Commission through various ministries. In 1973, Manila Baptist Bible College was founded with the goal of training people for full-time ministry. The school, which was later named Asia Baptist Bible College, continues to train willing individuals who would be missionaries, pastors, and faithful members of their respective churches. As Filipinos are known to have a passion and skill for music, it is no wonder that many of its members have chosen to faithfully serve and worship God through the music ministry. The adult choir has been singing regularly in worship services and hold evangelistic and Christmas cantatas. The junior choir sings in the worship services during special occasions and present cantatas as well. As in the past, Baptist Bible Church continues to minister to children of all ages through various ministries, like the Awana program, extension classes, and the yearly vacation Bible school. In these ministries, children are taught God's Word and they learn how to cherish and apply it in their lives. God has also used the youth mightily in sharing His Word. Young men and women have volunteered for ministries where their youthful energy and enthusiasm would be beneficial. Many of these young adults would become faithfully devoted to the ministry, and many would surrender their lives to become full-time pastors and missionaries. Baptist Bible Church also has a Sunday school program and is currently held every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. It seeks to build the spiritual growth of every age level with a curriculum centered on core doctrines and practical Christian living. Every third Saturday of the month, Baptist Bible Church offers free medical services and medicine to those in need. This ministry was started by Mom Donna Lyons with the goal of not just healing the sick, but also reaching the lost with the gospel. Christian doctors offer their services for free and are assisted by other volunteers to make this ministry possible. Royal Christian Academy is a ministry that started as a preschool program in 2004. Its goal is to share the gospel to students and their parents, as well as provide excellent education grounded on solid Christian values. Don't be afraid to step out by faith like the people of the past did. 
And that's the key. God's given you the Word of God, the truth of God, and being able to take those truths and apply them to today's world or tomorrow's world is the most important thing. Those eternal truths. God is true. His Word is true. Trusting Him is always right. Lagi na in-emphasize natin, Pastor Hobie, Pastor Lyons, you have a talent, you sit for the and dami natin ministries na kailangan ng mga workers. God has been faithful in giving us a church that already that is based on the rock that is Jesus Christ and if not for being rooted in Christ siguro itong church natin would not have weathered all the problems that we have undergone in the past but God has been faithful look some have gone away but God has been faithful in bringing us more families more new people look at our Young people, they are so active. We are getting more young people coming in. And many children, because of Awana, they are getting to be grounded in the work of the Lord. Young people, millennials, continue serving the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 15, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. There is more to conquer in the spiritual warfare. We cannot be relaxing and complacent when souls are dying. The church, I hope, will be sending more missionaries, more churches will be established. We have to leave our comfort zone for God to use us. And so we give all the glory to God. Our chips are always going to come. Just remember that God allows those to come for your faith to be tested. And it's when your faith is tested that the greatest blessings are just around the corner. That's when the, the greatest blessings are just waiting for you. Because God blesses faith. He blesses you when you trust Him. So He'll allow the tests of faith to come our way. Let them come. Keep trusting. If we understand the Bible and the truths of God's Word, in reality, this world's not our home. I come to the Philippines and I say, it's not my home. I go to the States and I say, it's not my home. I kind of live in, in between the two. I kind of live between the two worlds. I don't live here and I don't live in the States. I don't really live in this world. I want to kind of live where heaven's my home. And the longer I live, and the more people I know, that the more people I know that have come to know the Lord because of the work that my dad and my mom and my brothers, my sister, and other people, even like you, people like the people of Santa Mesa have come to touch. Their hearts have been changed. Their minds are being changed by the Word of God. They're no longer people of this world. Heaven's their home. And we could say the world doesn't understand this. And we long to go to be with people who've gone on. But at the same time, God has left us here and there's a work to do to prepare others to go to that place as well. And I'm so thankful that Santa Mesa Baptist Bible Church was a part of my life. And I encourage those who are still there to get involved to participate, to say, let's let's see the future. The past is, you can't change it, but let's look to the future and let's say, what does God have for us to do? Where can we go? What can we do?
to prepare a generation of people who will make a difference in more people's lives and change this nation, families, but individuals as well. So that Jesus Christ can make the difference in them that he has made in us. And we can see this world in a different light. Santa Mesa, I thank you for the part that you've played in my life. But I also thank you for what you're going to do in the days to come. Our people have to have a vision, doing more. The problem with churches, I see, we are satisfied. We got our building, we remodeled it, it looks nice, we're happy. Okay, let's just take it easy. That's, that's wrong. We need to thank God for it and use it for His honor and His glory. Having people saved and never forget the vision of winning people to Christ. A Christian that grows and has promises of God's Word, they will not get discouraged. They will claim the promises of God, even though it's that. Like my wife died, I have to claim the promise that she's with the Lord. And God does everything good. And uh, so we have problems that come in our lives. But I don't know why. We don't have to know why. We will when we get to heaven. But uh, let's keep serving the Lord regardless of the obstacles and problems and disappointments that come in our life. Many people quit when they have a problem. They think God don't love them. God still loves us. It's our strength. I'm so happy serving the Lord in the Philippines. My joy. God, I've been reading my Old Testament again and again, and I noticed, and this is God's plan, every leader of the Old Testament people said you are to obey my commands and keep my statues and worship me. I will bless you. And that would be my desire for every member of our church, that we would love the Lord, honor the Lord, keep His commandments. We need to tithe, give to missions, pray, win souls, and make soul winning one of the main parts of our church, and giving to missions. And that's the Great Commission. And God said He would bless a church like that. If a church doesn't give to missions, they're kind of, we're kind of selfish, and we don't have a vision of the world dying and going to hell. We need to do our part, and we need to do a greater part. More people need to be saved. God has faithfully sustained His people who served Him well. May the testimony of Baptist Bible Church magnify the faithfulness and the love of God for today and for years to come. By His mercy and grace, Baptist Bible Church will steadfastly glorify God in worship and in fulfillment of the Great Commission till Jesus comes.